Just a quick reminder before we get into the lesson to download the hands-on lab exercises that accompany this full CCNA course. I'll include the link in the description. Also, remember to subscribe and hit the notifications bell so you don't miss any of the lessons in the course. Okay, let's get into it. In this lecture, you'll see how to test REST APIs with Postman with a lab demo. So first thing that I need to do is to install Postman onto my laptop here. So I've gone to postman.com and you can see right on the home page, there's a link to download the app. So you can download and run the app on your machine. You can also run this as a Google Chrome plugin as well. So I've already done that. I've got Postman installed on here. Next thing is I need some kind of devices that I can interact with with the REST API. So I'm going to use the Cisco DevNet Sandbox for that. To find that, just go to Google and Google for Cisco DevNet Sandbox. It will be the first hit. So I've gone to this page here. And then in here, you can click on Get Started with Sandbox or look at the Sandbox catalog. And that will bring you here. And you can see that in the DevNet Sandbox, Cisco have got loads of different systems here, which you can interact with for testing and for learning about network programmability and automation. And it's all free. You can see that they'll either be always on, which means they're always accessible to everybody, or you can reserve one of the reservable lab environments as well. So I have come in here and I'm going to be working with one of these iOS XE on CSR Lab. CSR is a virtual router which runs the iOS XE operating system, which does support a RESTful API. So I'm going to use that and I'm going to test how to use it with Postman. So I've already come in here to one of the always on labs. I've opened that. And then when I do that, you can see over here on the left, I can scroll down to the access details. That gives me the URL of the network device. Also, I've got my SSH, netconf, and restconf ports there as well, and the username and password to use. So I've got all of the information I need about the device I'm going to interact with. So let's have a look at Postman. So this is what Postman looks like. And up here in the right, I can import environment variables in here. So I can either manually configure my own environment variables. I can also import them in from another location. So I've already done that. And you can see I've imported the DevNet sandbox variables for this particular lab environment. To see the environment variables, I click on the I symbol here. And you can see that the host variable is using the URL of the device I'm interacting with. And I've also configured the port 9443 as well. So looking back in the information, you can see there is the URL that I'm interacting with. And I'm going to be using restconf on port 9443. So by putting that in my environment variables, it just makes it more convenient to work with Postman. And let me show you how that works. So another thing that we can have in Postman as well, before I come back to the environment variables, is you can have collections. And this is where you can save requests that you've used before. So if you're using this for testing on multiple systems, and you know that you're going to be reusing the commands again, or if you're just coming back to the same system again, and you want to run those same commands again, you can save them as a collection and it means that they're readily, readily available for you to use again. So it's very convenient. So I've imported this collection here for the DevNet Learning Labs, which works with this particular lab environment. And I will expand that out. And the first thing that I'm going to do is to read the list of interfaces on that device. So I'm going to click on this Get Request, and it's going to populate it over in the main window here. And here you can see the environment variables being used. So with the environment variable, it's got two curly brackets there. So this is using the host variable and then the port variable. And looking back at the variables again, it's going to put in the URL for me and the port for me, save me typing that whole thing in. 
And if I want to use this again later on a different system, I can just update the host variable and also the port as well. And then it's going to make it very convenient for me to do that. Okay, so first thing that I'm going to do is I'm going to send in a get request into that virtual router to get its list of interfaces. And you can see here is the URL to use here. So for this information, just check the documentation for the API for the device that you're using, and it will tell you how to format your requests in there. So this is the URL to go to, to get a list of the information, of the interfaces and the information about them. Other information that I need to enter in here, I need to authenticate, I need to have rights to get this information. So for that, I'm going to click on the authorization tab here in Postman. And for iOS XE here, it's using basic authentication. So I will choose that, the basic auth. And you can see I've already filled in the details here with the username and password. If I go back into my browser, you can see that information was available there as well. Okay, so that is done. I'm also going to have to fill in my headers as well. So looking at the headers, I've specified the content type is application, Yang data, and JSON. I'm going to accept Yang data and JSON back. And I've also got my authorization in here. This was populated from my authorization parameters. And because I'm sending a GET request, I'm requesting to get information from the virtual router, I don't need to have anything in the body there. Okay, so that's everything that I need here. I've got my request is properly formatted according to the documentation for this API and device. So I can now click on send. That is gonna send the request to the device and I've got my response here. You can see I got a status of 200 okay, which means that the request was successful. I've got some headers in the information coming back. And if I look in the body, I can see I've got the list of my interfaces on that device. So I can see I've got interface gigabit ethernet one, the description, it's IP address and subnet mask, also gig ethernet two, gigabit ethernet three, I've got a loop back on there and a virtual port group interface. Okay, so that's how I got the information about the interfaces. But with my REST API, I can't just get information. I can also put information onto this device as well. So let's create a new loopback interface on it. You can see right now it's just got one loopback interface, which is loopback zero. So I'm going to go back into my collections here and you can see I've already added the request into my collection to a post request to add a new loopback interface. So get is going to pull information, post is going to push information to the device. I can see here, this is the URL that I want to use. I've got my headers configured in here again as well. And my authorization is going to be basic authorization with the username and password. And then I need to properly format the body. So in here, I'm going to configure loopback 100. Let's see that this is configured by Flackbox. And I'll give it the IP address 172.16.100.1. And it's a loopback. So I want to have a 32 bit subnet mask on there. So let's do that as well. Okay, so it's everything properly formatted. Again, I would have checked the, the documentation to find out the syntax I need to format this in. That's all done. I can now click on send. It's going to send the request and I can see that the status I get back is 201 created. So that looks good. So if I now go back to my get request to read information about the interfaces and send this again, I can see that there is my new interfaces being created loop back 100. The next thing I would probably want to do at this point is another post to save the configuration as well. But because I'm working on the shared lab over in the DevNet sandbox here, I want to leave this as I found it. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to clean this up. I'm going to delete that loop back interface I just created. So I can see here in my collection, I've got the request to delete the loop back interface. I will click on that. 
and it has populated everything in here for me it was look back 100 i created so i can just leave this as it is i don't need to edit it i've got my headers configured in there i've got my authorization done so i can now click on send and then i've got a 204 no content now 200 means that things are good so even though it says no content that's not actually a problem it's saying no content because it has deleted the loopback let's just verify that again so i'll click back on the get tab and send this again and i should see that the loopback 100 interface has gone okay done um other things i can do here in postman is i can click on the code button here and then I can choose from all of these different popular programming languages. So it's actually use Python and it gives me the, the Python syntax that I need to use here if I wanted to create a script in Python that actually sent this command. Because with Postman, you can use it. It's really used for testing because you can send individual commands there. So you can use it to test that the commands are working. But to have an actual useful script, you're going to want to have a script that's going to do multiple things, most likely. So Postman is not the tool for that. You can create your own scripts in your programming language. Postman makes it very easy to do that because it does tell you the code that you need to use for each individual request. You're probably going to have to do a bit of editing in your programming language as well, but this just makes it very convenient for you. Okay, so if I was doing this and I was exporting it into code for Python, well, the next step, really, I would need to know how to program in Python. And while Python is a comparatively easy programming language to learn, there's still a pretty steep learning curve there. If you're currently a network engineer, you're used to working at the command line, maybe you haven't learned any coding before, then learning Python would be quite a lot of work to do. But Thankfully, you don't have to go and learn a programming language to be able to make use of network programmability and automation. There's other tools that we can use like Ansible and DNA Center, and I'm going to be covering those tools starting in the next lecture. Thanks for watching. If you'd like to get the complete course ad free right now, then you can click on the link above my head or in the description to enroll in my CCNA Gold Bootcamp. It also includes full study notes, quizzes, and 150 pages of additional troubleshooting labs you can't find anywhere else.